Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial futures. This is our Forest Tech Analysis Trading Plan for Sunday, July 10th. Before we begin, we always start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trade recommendation, no matter what form of investing you choose. Stock, Forex, Futures, Options. They all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is still your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our weekend Forex tech analysis for Sunday, July 10th where we're going to look at the price sessions, uh, price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the gold and the crude oil chart to see if there's any leading sentiment. We'll come up with the low volatility watch list and then sidebar watch list. We'll look at the economic calendar to see if there's anything affecting our future and open trades. And if there's time, we'll also have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. Okay, we're starting off with the dollar Canadian, and what we can see are two different things here. I just want to bring up the pointer. And we can see, uh, those of you who have been watching this for a while, we talked about this ascending wedge. We got a breakout, hit the 200 moving average, and then we failed, and we failed pretty hard. Uh, we broke out of this range of 96 up to uh, 98, and notice that as we broke, and came back up, what was once was support became resistance. We had the 25 moving average also, and now we've moved back down. Now, what's, the question still is, what what is our trend? Um, if we zoom out a little bit, of course we can see longer term, we do have some lower highs here. Uh, so longer term, there is a downtrend. And so you can see when we came back up into a sell zone, we, we came back down. But when you look at it in the shorter term, you know, it's just a lot of messiness. Sure, we had a big move here as far as a drop. But I would say uh, keep your hands, uh, center your hands, because th there's no trend that I want to trade on this one quite yet. Let's see if we can find something cleaner. We'll go to the dollar franc. So clearly in a downtrend, we can see that on the long term. As we zoom in, we can see that we are channeling here. And so this is something that you want to take advantage of, uh, shorting uh, the 50, but more importantly, shorting around 85,400, 85,500. And then you can see our support down here at 8,300. And so as we look at it hourly, we're getting closer and closer to our 8,300. Then that's when we have to start thinking about buying until proven wrong. And notice that that's probably why you see certainly we had the uh, non-farm payroll numbers and shoot us right on down. And then we started consolidating at our support level where the buyers are telling the sellers, we have value here. You can try to keep pushing it, but we see value. So that's why we're starting to see these dojis of indecision. Finally, we have the dollar yen as far as the dollar currency pairs and this is another one that you know longer term consolidating and then when we zoom in consolidating so uh, and again a non-farm payroll number disappointment and so I mean there may be a buy coming in here at this 80.20 uh, price level and that's where I'll consider it but right now um, the dollar pairs seem to be really considering uh, consolidating at this time as we move over to our euro currency pairs, we're going to see kind of the same thing where stocks currency pairs are consolidating and there's potential buys or sells or longs or shorts based upon the range versus the actual pattern. So here we can see longer term, uh, we're sort of in a ascending wedge pattern Now we broke down out of that, but we also have this support here at around 1.37, 1.36. So, and we are on the buy side of our zone, so there, there is a long potentially there uh, to potentially head back up to this longer, let me zoom a little bit more, you can see this range that were up and down, up, and now we've come back down, so are we going to head back up? The only concern is what happened right here, we made a lower high, so uh, we may, uh, if we do head back up, I wouldn't necessarily anticipate heading all the way back up to the top. As we go over to the yen, I'm sorry, the euro franc, uh, we can see the same downtrend like the dollar yen was. Uh, we got a breakdown, came right on back up, 
hit our resistance. You know, here's here's some prior resistance here. Um, to moving average, and now we're coming back down. So we're in a zone that you, we could be looking for a long in a downtrend. So you know that that's 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 counter trend. So um, you know your risk tolerance is going to have to det determine that. But what about the euro pound? Here we can see longer term we're in an uptrend. Um, uh, We'll come over here and grab our trend line from this view, and we can see a couple things that we need to watch for here. We have this trend line here, which is going to be equal with the um, 200 moving average here, and then we have this trend line here, our short term secondary trend line. Let's try that one more time. So now let's go ahead and zoom on out. And we can kind of get an idea why we might be bouncing. We're in a buy zone on our hourly. And uh, we see kind of where we're bouncing here. Uh, we also have supported a 50 moving average. So th there's, there is a potential here for a long. Um, but again, not loving the chart patterns as much as I'm liking the zones. What about the euro yen? Well, most of the yen pairs are consolidating, and we see that here. Um, so as we get closer to the 200 moving average, there certainly could be a long. We're on the buy side of our zones. So that's kind of what I'm looking there. Again, not loving the pattern, just liking the zone. So that seems to be the theme of the day. And we'll finish off the euro pairs with the euro dollar. And even the euro dollar is starting to get into that. We had a great uptrend, and now we're consolidating for the past uh, month and a half here to two months. So um, certainly, we, you know, we have to start thinking long down here closer to 1.4. Outside of that, um, it, it's sort of a choppy pattern. Okay, we're going to end with the pound currency pairs. We've got the pound Canadian. And this one has the potential, at least we see a trending down pattern. Now, of course, if I zoom out for you, you can see this, you know, you can see this range that are in. However, what I want you to notice is that these wicks here, uh, and let's dry, draw our price level here. The wicks here from back in uh, January. And now let's zoom out. Is basically where we're at. So there, uh, so you can see, you know, we we consolidated here for a while, and then boom, took right on off. So there's reason to think that buyers have found value finally, and that we can push higher. But short term, we are in a downtrend, um, so we may need to look for a sell here in our sell zone. Um, but it's it's just not perfect, and and that's really been the theme this we can re, uh, report here, haven't it, that we haven't found beautiful setups. Now here's the pound franc, very nice. All, all the franc pairs are in downtrends, and we're looking for either confirmation of the downtrend with lower lows, or are we going to reverse that? So here's one. We've come back up and tested the 20, tested resistance, and now we're coming back. So below this uh, 1.33 level, may confirm a push down to the uh, the lows. Get below these wicks. Uh, let's go to the pound yen. And we know that our yen pairs aren't really doing anything, and we can see that just looking at even before we zoom in. And we zoom in. The, the good news about this is hopefully, uh, now that we're consolidating here, that we can get a pop, you know, so, you know put an alert at the low and the high of all this mess. And see if we can get a pop. However, we never really did get our pop out of the wedge that we're in. So I'm not liking the yen pairs right now. Anything with the win. What about the pound dollar? Falling susceptible, like the rest of the market, into a consolidating range. The good news is it looks like we're on the buy side of, of this range here. But we can see on the hourly that we are not in the buy zone. So I would hold off going long just quite yet. Real quick, let's go to the Aussie dollar. And here's another one. At least here we we know we're clearly in an uptrend. We can see clearly an uptrend. 
we zoom in, see that we're in a range, and so I'll be interested to see if we can get above 1.079, get above 1.08 to see if we can test the last swing high, um, if we can get back down here into the buy zones on the for a long. And really, the best trending pair is going to be the New Zealand dollar, and we can see that it has not got caught up in the consolidation that the rest of it has. If we can get this back down into a buy zone, we have to consider it going long. For our gold chart, we can see long term, there's this rain, long term, we're in an uptrend. Uh, for the past month, month and a half, we've been in this range. We're at the top side of our range. We can see on our volume profile that this 1542 may become our new point of control here as far as volume ac accumulation. Um, so uh, there may be a short setting up here um, because, uh, again, we tested this 1.1550 price level before and were unsuccessful. But if with the non-farm payroll numbers that just came out, um, Bernanke speaking uh, this week, we may see some weakness in the dollar um, and uh, we might see a flight to gold. Uh, with crude oil, we can see that uh, likewise we were range bound, we had the strategic release, and now we've come right back into this range. So uh, there is probably a potential long here because of the support level. Uh, it's testing it right now. If it holds, then we may once again be in this 102 to 96 range. Uh, because of time, we're going to go straight to our watch list. And right now, for our low volatility and inside of our watch list, we don't have any direct candidates. Uh, as the market opens, uh, we'll probably see something start to set up on the low volatility watch list. Our education spotlight is about having realistic goals. And we've been talking about what separates winning traders and losing traders. And typically, what you'll see is that, you know, those get rich quick traders those trading the wrong system because they don't have enough money, um, their stocks are wrong, um, we're going to make $5,000 a day with only $500. That's not realistic goals. And when you don't have realistic goals, you take trades looking for these this unrealistic goal, and those are bad trades. You have to trade within your system. You have to trade within your risk tolerance. And you have to trade within your capital. So know who you are as a trader know your system and know how much money you have to trade and how much of that money you're willing to risk and that will put you down the path to being a successful trader you can find our videos on on facebook youtube and twitter on facebook we have a page are you financially literate you know we have a great five uh, video course on high probability trading it will help you design your own high probability trading setups but as you know we firmly believe that it's about the trader's mindset, and our coaching will help you one-on-one -on -one develop that personalized trading plan to give you that psychological capital to execute those, those um, high-probability trading setups and help you develop that trading's mindset. Uh, if you're trading Forex, you might as well get paid to trade. Um, cash back for your Forex trades, win or lose, doesn't change your spread, nothing changes, just receive cash. And if you're looking for automated signals, we do have a relationship for automatic signals. Um, you can either have it automated traded or you can receive those signals and trade them yourselves. You guys know, as we just talked about, it's not about the system, it's not about the indicator or the room that you're in. It's about having a psychological capital to trade your system. And that's what we can do here at Move Up a Mic. We can give you that psychological capital. We can help you develop a trader's mindset to be a winning, consistent trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.